Hello, and welcome to the new Autograph. Autograph has had a major makeover with a fresh new design. Autograph celebrated ease of use and powerful select and right-click user interface has been retained and many new 2D and 3D objects have been introduced. For each object there is an associated list of attributes. The most dramatic features of the new Autograph involve these attributes which can be selectively used in on-screen calculations. There is also a groundbreaking new Argand diagram page enabling complex numbers to be explored as dynamic objects. So let's get started. To explore the topic of inverse functions, I'm going to put a point up here. And you'll notice that points now have labels. So let's just double click on that. And you can also include its value. Now I'm going to use this feature here, the xy attribute point. What this does, it creates a new point based on attributes of, of something that you've got selected. So I'm going to make the x coordinate of the new point the y from this one and the y coordinate the x from this one. Let's produce a point down here. Fantastic. And this shows how these points are reflections of one another. I'm going to put y equals x, x, y equals x squared. And I'm going to select this point and this curve and attach it. It's very nice. I can move it around. You'll notice that it's now creating another parabola, which is a reflection of the first one. But is it an inverse? Well, let's have a look first of all at selecting these two. And the right click option now, which is uh, extended by lots of sub menus, is going to create lockers. That, what that will do, it will create a, uh, a system of points uh, that's based on the, this position, depending on how it changes when this one changes. Aha, uh -huh. so there it goes. Now, is this an inverse? Well, we could uh, have a look at this. Let's right click, put a vertical line through there. And I like to think of the vertical line test. If, it, if it's not a single valid function, then it's not an inverse. So now I'm going to double click on this and change it so that it's startup options. It only plots from zero, so we've only got half the curve. That's better. So now we do indeed have an inverse function. Now to explore the topic of area of a triangle, I put a couple of lines on here, one at y equals 0 and y equals 3. I'm going to go to the point mode now, which has some extra possibilities. And I'm going to use this one, which means I can dynamically draw lots of lines, which is a nice simple way of creating a triangle. So let's drag up to here, and perhaps down to here, and then... OK, uh, now I've got these three points, but I'll just select them all and use the option now to create a shaded area, just to make it look smart. Now, this is an object. It has attributes of a perimeter and area, which we'll find out in a minute, because I'm going to use the calculator now. Here is the on-screen calculator, which will recognize attributes when it sees them. So you just click on here, and you can see that it's going to offer the perimeter and the area. So if I click on area, and I can put the text before, I can do area equals 12. Is that correct? First of all, let's puzzle this out. You've got 1, 2, 7, 8, down 3, 3, eight, 24, divided by 2 is 12. So that is the calculation. It is itself an attribute if we wish to use it again for something else. Um, but it's important to realize you can move this around, of course, and the area does not change. But the perimeter does. To have a look at some regular polygons, I've created a hexagon, a square, and another hexagon. The way you do this in Autograph is just to select two points in such a way that the subsequent polygon that's created is created in a clockwise manner. So I've selected those two and I'm going to right click, create a regular polygon from two points. I could do a polygon from a point in the centre, two points. And let's see, well we'll start off with uh, an equilateral triangle. And then I'm going to select it and use the animate object command. So I'm going to go to 4, 5, 6. Now what size do you think is going to fit this? 8, 9, 10, 12. So it's I'm not quite sure what the name of it is. It's a dodecagon, I think. OK, here I've pasted an image of the Pentagon building in Washington uh, off Google Earth. And I'm just going to put a couple of points, one here 
I've got them both selected in the right sequence to create a clockwise pentagon off there. So right click, create regular polygon 4, 5. And there it goes. Uh, let's look at the angle. We could do this point, this point, and this point, and then right click, create angle. Uh, let's have a look at the settings. I think probably we could do with it being a different color. Let's make it yellow so it's a bit easier to see and perhaps a bit bigger as well. There you are. Uh, if it's radians you want then that's that, but that's the control over there. You can also double click on the pentagon and ask for the center point and then use this feature here so you can draw a line segment from the origin This famous problem in geometry concerns uh, a house here, which is OK, and the house over here, which is not OK because it's on fire. Um, so we'll represent this house with a point here, and this one as a point here. Now what the uh, owner of the house A wants to do is go to the river, collect some water, and get to the fire as quickly as possible. So um, what we, the classical way of, of solving this is to select this point and the river and right click transform a reflection Let's just move it a bit closer so we can see it there it goes and so there's going to be a point on the river where he collects the water so his path is going to be from a to c and then from c to b so the classical approach is to also join a dash to b so that by simple geometry when c is at this position that is the minimum distance well, there's another approach to this, which is quite nice. If we use our calculator, we can say uh, what's the distance AC added to the distance CB. It's down as AC plus CB equals 3.72. And as we move this around, you can see that it is at minimum. But it would be quite nice to show this visually. So then I thought it would be quite nice to use the x, y. So I'm going to choose this as the x and this as the y. And up here, therefore, it's going to create a point whose x coordinate is the x of c and the y coordinate is the result of the calculation. Perfect. So off we go. So we're going to expect a point 3.7, sort of up here somewhere. Yes, look at that. Perfect. And as this moves around, so it does, and you can see that it does minimize there. Quite nice, I think, to select that and put a horizontal line through there and also create a locker. So again, we'll select these two and right click, create locus from there to there. And then you can see that is quite an interesting function and a different way of solving this very famous problem. OK, let's do some differentiation now with uh, what I regard as my favorite cubic because uh, here it is, it has its maximum at x equals minus 1, minimum at x equals plus 1, and point of reflection at x equals 0. Um, I think uh, I'll just tell you now that the point mode has been extended, so you don't need control anymore to look at intersections and max and min and so on. So that's very nice. Just undo that. We'll just zoom in like this, make fill up the screen a bit better, and let's pull in a skier. Ah. What are we going to do with that? Well, first of all, we double click. And we don't want that in case we mess around with the axes again. And we want this to follow the gradient of the curve. So we put a point on here and select the skier and the point and right click, attach to point. And there it is, very nicely following the slope of the curve. So it's quite a nice visual way of talking about max and min and so on without mentioning the word calculus. So let's put the point back again and this time we're going to attach a tangent. So you can now discuss what it means to have a zero slope here. And at this point um, I'm going to drag on a picture of what I use all the time which is a Wacom tablet. I think it's very very important. It means you can write on the screen in a way that really you cannot with a mouse. So for example I'm going to have a look at this and as this point moves around, and we can do it with the arrow keys as well, and you can see that it doesn't go any steeper than that, 
And uh, so that's quite a nice way of looking at the point of inflection. But then I thought, well, what about using our old friend the xy? Because if we make the x the x coordinate of this point, and this straight line has two attributes, a intercept and a gradient. So we'll see what we do now. x, y, x and gradient. Perfect. So what is the gradient of this point? About one along, and it's about one and a bit. So it's going to be about here. There it is. And you can see that this point will move up and down. Aha! It's going to be zero soon. There it is. So once again, we can do a locus. Or we could do uh, we could do a trace point. There'd be another way of doing it. Right click, trace point, and just see uh, individual point. Yeah, that'll do fine. Okay. So you can see now we're creating the first derivative. Let's have a look at integration uh, using some new tools. So let's do y equals x squared this time. So I'm going to put a point here and a point a bit further up the line. Let's just pull it down this way a bit. Now if I select this point, then this point, and right click, create an area, I'm going to use Simpson's rule because it's exact for cubics and parabolas. So here's the area. Now again we can use the calculator to have a look at the area. So you've got area, centroid and exit. Area is what we want. Area equals. As we move this around, of course, so it changes. So let's have a look at selecting this as the x and this as the y. And here's our old friend x, y again. x and result, perfect. 1.3, it's going to be about there. There it is. And once again, we're going to be having a look at something. Oh, now that's a shape we recognize. So again, I'm going to do select these two and create a locus. And there is our old friend, one third of x cubed, plus a constant, of course. Well, what's the constant all about? Well, we can just move this one up and down, and there's your plus c. So it's a slightly novel approach to looking at the area function. Now, this is where the fun starts. I've just plotted a, a simple quadratic, x squared minus 2x plus c. So as we vary c with the constant controller, there are two real roots at the moment, but as we increase it, so there comes a point when c is equal to 1, and there's just one root, and subsequent to that, the roots have to be imagined. So it would be really nice if we could actually see these imaginary roots. Using the standard formula, uh, this is what they end up with, is x is equal to uh, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now that all those twos cancel, so that's just going to be x equals 1. I can use the on-screen keyboard for doing things like plus or minus and square root, square root, brackets, 1 minus c. Now I'm going to copy that because I want to use it later on. Copy. Okay, well there's another way that we can look at this, which is in the Argan diagram page. Here we have real and imaginary. So right-click, you can enter a complex number, either in Cartesian form or polar form, or in free form like this. This is what we're going to do. So right click, paste. Right, we don't want the x equals. So 1 plus or minus square root of 1 minus c. Now uh, we're on a new page, so c will start off as 1, so that's just going to be z equals 1. It's going to be here. And there it is. Okay, but as we change the constant controller, we can make c uh, less than 1, and that will give us two real roots. There they are. But as soon as we increase beyond 1, you get two roots, which are, of course, complex conjugate roots. So that's a really nice way of visualizing it. But there's one better way, uh, which is to go into three dimensions. So here we have the situation where we can use the constant controller again. x squared minus 2x plus c, x-axis, y-axis, imaginary axis. So as c goes back to 1, we've got... Uh, just one root, and there we have two real roots. And of course you can look at these upside down and, and have some fun. Now there's a wonderful man in Auckland in New Zealand called Philip Lloyd who's been having a lot of fun with these and fi finding a phantom parabola that these two roots belong to. So do check him out on, on YouTube and, and the web generally, he's all over the place. And of course I'm very pleased to say he 
use this autograph for his work. Let's have a look at the other aspects that you can do with the complex number page. So let's just put um, one point here and one here. Now they behave very much like vectors. If you're going to add these two together, the rule is that you add the x's and add the y's, which is exactly the same as vectors. But of course, just like you can do with vectors, it's all dynamic. If you select this one and multiply it by i, you'll get one at 90 degrees. If you have a polar version, you can put a point on, say here, and then if you raise it to the power of 2, well, that's going to double the angle and square the distance. So it's going to be up here. There it is. And of course, again, it's all dynamic. Now, the nth roots are really nice. Let's put a point on at 4, real, and look at the square root of that. Well, the square root of 4 is 2, as we know, but that 4 could also be at 2 pi radians all the way around. So when you halve that angle, you get to pi. So that's why you get two answers. And it's quite nice to see what happens when it goes negative. So we're talking about the square root of minus 4 has two complex roots. If we select that and then this, we can animate this and go to the cube root and the fourth roots and so on. I just think that's amazing. I've taught this topic for years without really being able to visualize it like this. That's probably as much as you can digest for now. In the best traditions of news broadcasts, I will now use the tab system here to give you the headlines again. So here are the complex numbers pages and the simple the 3D and the 2D interpretation of the quadratic. Nice way of looking at area function and differentiation first derivative. Nice solution of Heron's function. A view from the Pentagon of off Google Earth. Fun and games with regular polygons. Having a look at the area of a triangle. And uh, a novel way to look at inverse functions. I hope you've enjoyed this brief tour of just some of the new features of Autograph.